Welcome to the Art Channel. In this film, we're visiting an exhibition of large photographic prints by the Canadian photographer Jeff Wall being exhibited at White Cube in London. Jeff Wall was born in Vancouver, Canada in 1946 and was involved in conceptual photography. He really has changed the way we think of what a photograph might be and how a photograph is made. We're standing in front of a photograph called Pawn Shop, made in 2009. And I think, like all of Wall's images, it's a revelation. It lets us into everyday life. We get to peek at, not private moments, but um, strange interactions, maybe personal interactions in this way. It's obviously a place where you come and trade in your goods, in this case, a guitar for the guy. We can't see what the woman is trading in, and you borrow against that. And it's a, it's a tatty, down at heel interior, and obviously it speaks to the idea of people having to pour and having to let go of their precious objects. It's a place of humiliation, really, and a system of dependent on money, on income, and assets. But it's to me, it's a you know, it's a very transitional space and a transitional moment. He's entering into this booth, and you can see him holding the guitar, about to kind of surrender it. I think Wall's photographs are really successful and interesting because of the detail. They are composed like a painting. You can just see the top of the head of the person who works in the pawn shop. We've got this tatty, sort of rather cheap print of a ship there above. Is it for sale or is it part of the decoration? We've got these chains that all belong to individuals at some point. It, it's a, a really sort of melancholy scene, but nevertheless a kind of a real one, isn't mm. it? And of course it's, it's redolent of a, a Catholic religious tradition in that these spaces look a little bit like confessional mm. booths. And I suppose in a way there is a similarity in that you are showing your most personal life. You're bringing the objects that mean something to you and that you've hung on to. Maybe they were gifts, maybe you, you bought um, in the hope of becoming a rock star, and you're letting go of them. So it's, it is, as you say, a very sad place. This is a place of surrender. It's a kind of a place of last resort. And Jeff Wall has this eye whereby he's looking at the world, looking at mundane details. Um, often he's observed these scenes and he's recreating them in his studio or building them as a set. So they sit really kind of awkwardly and interestingly at a sort of point between documentary and fiction. So uh, this band and crowd from 2011 is a very large print and it really is reminiscent of salon painting of the 19th century um, that Jeff Wall understands and you know, he's, he's a trained art historian. But if we're looking at this image, why has he made it? Is the, the question I'm asking myself. Because it feels authentic, but there's something off about it too. Like the crowd is a little bit sparse and there's something a little bit forced about some of the gestures, because of course they're simulating being at a concert. And you get that sense of the scale of the picture moving from the action through to the sort of bar hatch on the right here. So it's sort of a full uh, panorama, really, of this event taking place in this rather dingy hall. Yes, it's real and unreal, isn't it, like much of his work. And as you say, lots of the crowd, and it is a small crowd, is facing the band. And then you have kind of equally interesting, some interactions at the bar at the other end, three or four people who aren't even engaged in this. And you go from loud and leery, it's very kind of quiet and dark. And interesting that you say he studied art history. Real interest in people like Manet, in ideas of realism or what that might be. And he talks, he really talks in painterly terms. He talks about composition, colour, 
form, the way you construct a photograph, and references paintings a lot, I think. So I think he takes that into his, his way of working, his way of thinking. I do know that this is, um, he says, about the nature of disappointment. So I suppose if you're a band and you've made all this effort and you want to get picked up and you've got 20 people in the crowd, disappointing. The whole night is a bit of a flop. And it's a sad scene, isn't it? As you say, it's a kind of tatty, dark interior. It's had other lives. It's quite a strange and, yeah, disappointing scene. This diptych is called Actor in Two Roles and it's the female protagonist here that we see at centre stage in the middle of this room and again on the right hand side in this piece. And here Wall worked with uh, a production company, a theatre company and rehearsed and reenacted one scene from two plays. So the artifice is very obvious here. We know that we have somebody acting in two plays, taking on two identities. And interestingly, he's decided to just leave the heads of the front row of the audience so that we are about three rows back viewing the action. Yeah, it's a really interesting, intriguing work. It's a diptych. So that we have two sort of alternate works in tension, but they're unified by the fact that it's set in the same theatre. We've got um, the same actress playing two different roles. It's a metaphor for performance, isn't it, really, for, for acting and make-believe, um, the staging of a story with characters that he is able to present in two photographs side by side. But, you know, again, the question has to be asked, what, what are we really looking at and what do we learn by looking at these photographs? I think to use that cliche, Wall is always holding up a mirror for us to see ourselves, isn't he? To see our behaviours, to see our multiple identities, to bring to the forefront this idea of performing, of artifice, mm. of being several people all in one person. And I think it's interesting that his references, his sources are painting, uh, other photography, to some extent documentary photography, but equally novels and writing. And he kind of puts them all on the same level. None is more important than the other. So he observes, he reads, he listens, and then kind of comes to the action and reproduces it. Yeah, it's that sort of gap, in a way, um, between sort of hard and fast um, conditions that interest him. The, the slippage, really. Mm. Um, where documentary becomes fiction um, and we're really looking at, at something that feels very familiar, that's very real, we're sort of situated in the audience, looking ostensibly at a performance, but at the same time we know that the photographs themselves are a performance and th th there's a nice way in which the set, that rather sort of cheap rickety set, indicates that he himself has kind of made it, commissioned it. Um, and so there's an analogy made between photography and performance. In Mask Maker 2015, Jeff Wall is using this common uh, approach that he takes to making a photograph whereby he witnesses a scene in the street that's actually probably quite sort of transient and fleeting, but he decides to recreate it. And he, he says that he doesn't want to make a photograph in the moment as he sees it, like a photojournalist making reportage, but rather what interests him is to reenact it. The result is this rather entrancing image of this young man holding the shop front there and looking at his reflection in the glass, which we can't see, in order to decorate the mask that he's wearing on his face. It is really interesting, isn't it, that we don't see what he sees. We don't see the reflection. We just, as you say, see this kind of cheap mask over his eyes and his attempts to, to decorate it, to change it into something else. We don't know what's in the black bag. Maybe the mask came in the bag, maybe a kind of other crayons and pens. But it's, 
it's interesting because it's it's kind of a private moment in public, isn't it? It's a sort of voyeuristic photograph, even though we know it's um, set up, it's artifice. We're looking at somebody changing their appearance, which may normally happen in the privacy of their own home. So that idea of private moments in public spaces. He's also disguised by the mask, mm. and yet he's sort of mesmerised by his own image and his own activity. So there's something almost narcissistic mm. about it. He talks about looking at paintings, as we've mentioned, and interestingly, he talks about there being no old paintings. They may have been made two, three hundred years ago, but he says if you're looking at them now, they're relevant, they're new paintings. And I, I can see him kind of studying painting when I see a photograph like this. What is he setting us up to think? Why is he making images that affect us in particular ways? Jeff Woolley is a conceptual artist and his medium is photography and so he's really opening up a kind of journey through the character and properties of photography and that kind of resolved singular image. It's very ambivalent really what we experience looking at as photographs. It's, it's, inconclusive but nevertheless there's this kind of entrancement um, and a magic that he's able to stage in the photographs. Do you agree? Yeah it's strange isn't it because you come away or I come away feeling slightly disturbed and slightly saddened and also kind of uplifted which is very contradictory. Mm. You look at people's lives and you look at ordinary moments and you identify with them but also you see the toughness in people's lives or the loneliness in people's lives so in that way I think they're very truthful. Yeah the, he's sort of making photographs that are formal really beautifully composed, like a painting or a scene from a film. But there's also a psychological interest. He's foregrounding characters, really. They're, they're not speaking characters, but they have this kind of human presence, mm. don't they? And he does talk about, you know, they're not propaganda photographs, but he talks about looking at people in the photographs, perhaps empathising with them, maybe understanding some of the things that are happening in their lives, and then going back and, and he talks about being humanised by them, by thinking about what their lives might entail. So there's a kind of osmotic effect when you come and look at Jeff Wall photographs. Thank you for watching this film about Jeff Wall at White Cube on the Art Channel. If you've enjoyed the film, please subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Give us a thumbs up and we really appreciate your support.